seemed not too authoritarian, authoritarian. And for this reason, I did some research on how to be heard by people, and I watched an interesting short video by Julian Trezor, How to Speak So That People Won't Listen. I read How to Be Positive Leader, Small Action, A Big Impact by Gretchen, Spritzer and Dutton, and this taught me the best way to direct and give direction to a fairly large group. It really helped me to understand how to make a, a positive impact on my group. As a group, we researched existing films to develop the look and feel of our film. We wanted to create something natural and realistic. For this reason, we took inspiration from social realism films like Fish Tank and This is England. Both of them are set in suburbs, and because of this, we have chosen to film around Canning Town, where walls appeared ruined um, and the location seemed really neglected. We took inspiration from the over-the-shoulder shot done in the mirror scene in the film La Haine, and we were inspired also from the shower scene in Psycho, and we used a waterproof cleaning film to make this shot in which the water seemed to touch the lens. Being, of course, my first film, I was re really not sure about how the sound would work, and I used a 3 meters rod boom pole and a sound device 552. I tried to focus my boom directly to the person that was talking because it was really easy to record also other unwanted sounds. I managed to record two minutes of ambient sound that we used in order to make the whole film more real and credible. We had good performances, good general editing, and really good use of not the dating sound in order to create the atmosphere. I haven't always been able to totally direct the film and sometimes I tended to not be quite authoritarian. That's why I would try to be more authoritarian with the crew and the actors and I would say more clearly if I don't like something. In which regard the film language, as a director I wanted to highlight the fact that he was in Harry and above all the contrast between the first part of the film in which it seems that he is in Harry for an important appointment and the second in which instead we know that the protagonist had only to go to McDonald's. In order to convey that, I suggested to use a shaky camera that could show his rushing nature. We decided uh, to write in his hand, wake up, in order to show that he was planning to wake up early and to make the audience believe even more that he was going to an important appointment. We decided to, uh, to use low key angle in which McDonald's sign is about the protagonist's head. And with this type of shot, I wanted to show how in modern times fast foods and important brands have the power over us. We made sure with, my, with the producer um, that nobody tripped over the tripod, so everyone had a position um, far away from the camera, a place where only the DOP stand. The whole crew, and um, especially me as a sound operator, had a slightly more displaced position uh, than the one of the DOP. The lighting and camera were set up and stored, and I made sure that the whole crew were aware of um, the, the wiring, except those who were working with electrical equipment. My film is a short film called The Promise. Our film was about a couple who promised each other to don't sell drugs anymore, but at the end of the film, for a big twist, the audience discovered that the girl is actually still selling drugs. My role in this film was the producer. Me and my group did some research on how to set up a query, and after that, we decided to create an unfinished space that focused only on the character being questioned. We were inspired by the interrogation scene in El Camino. To make the relationship between the drug dealers couple more real, we have seen many similar films like Blow, in which the protagonist starts selling drugs with a woman he fell in love with. Watching films like this helped us to understand more about how drugs-based relationship could be and being more informed would describe a similar relationship. I really liked to organize team, but at the beginning I was really worried because we were a group of nine people, so it was really difficult to find a time where all of us were free to film. In order to be able to do my job, I thought the best thing to do firstly was to organize my time. So I downloaded an app, Trello, where I, was, where I wrote all of my um, commitments and after that I was able to organize the world group. I also read an article from the New York Film Academy, How to Become a Film Producer, who helped me to understand more um, which was the role of the producer. In order to cast actors, um, I visited many websites and I read the book, So You Want to Be a Producer by Lauren Sturman, and that, after that I was, able, mm, I was able to hire and cast an actor. So as a group we did some research and we found a site web, mm, backstage. Uh, we wrote the plot of our film and we looked for actors who were interested. We didn't have a good uh, male actor at the, end of the, um, at the end of the film in many scenes and especially in the interrogation scene, he overacted and he used his facial expression in an, ex in an exaggerated way. So because of that I would spend more time in casting actors and I would have chosen uh, someone, more, um, someone better suited than the actor we chose. In which regards the health and safety, uh, being a producer I made sure that my whole group knew what to do with the equipment that he used. 
and before the starting the shooting we set the lights in memory to put the cables underneath so as not to trip anyone and especially and I especially wanted my mate who was in charge of the lights not to touch them with bare hands and to make sure to pull off the plug in case he should have moved them. We film in two more or less safe places, but despite that I told my group that, mm, uh, the dangers that could be there. I also advise using light, uh, lighting gloves to avoid burning ourselves or passing electrical current through the body. The title of the first film is The Plunge. It talks about the story of a couple and the hypothetical reaction that the girl would have had if the boyfriend left her. We link the title with the action of suicide. In fact, at the end of the film we see that hypothetically if she had really been left, the girl would have jumped from a bridge. In this film, I was the editor. I researched the most famous and well-known editors in the world of cinema to arrive at my goal of creating an environment of tension and mystery that would create curiosity in audience. In There Will Be Blood, Dylan Titchener, an important editor, shows how it is possible to create tension thanks to the presence of silence and cutting dialogue or in general shots. Being my film without dialogue, I followed these cutting shots and putting together all these short takes, one after the other. I researched also many types of transition and with the reference to Blade Runner I decided to use this soft transition to create a more poetic and fairy tale film. It was my first experience as an editor so I learned to use Premiere Pro. At the beginning I put all the shots together and I learned to cut and modify them in such a way as to create the atmosphere of nostalgia and sadness that the director wanted. At first it was a difficult job but thanks to the DOP I was able to easily work with the shots that I had, that being long takes gave me the opportunity to modify them to my liking. We, have really, we had really good actors, so good, uh, so good performance and really good shots. The only thing I would do differently was the color grading. Being my first experience with editing, I wasn't really able to do it, so I would spend much more time in color grading. We used a very tight equipment because we knew we were going to film on a bridge. So during the shooting, myself and the um, other editor paid attention to the equipment. Not having used the artificial light, it was easier to be careful only, only of the camera and the sound equipment. We were careful to shot in the center of the bridge and we made sure to don't stick the camera out of the bridge. The title of our fourth film is Calore, which in English means heat, that shows the apparently professional preparation of a meal that then ends up being a typical Italian dinner. In this film I was a DOP. My goal was to entertain the audience to eat the food, so I decided to simulate the close-up made in the film Julia and Julia and the scene um, where the protagonist tastes the food. Thanks to these close-ups and the help of a warm light, I made the food look really good. We wanted to include a shot of an old film, so we decided to simulate within our film the shot of the movie The General, in which the face of the protagonist appears through a hole made of paper. In this way, we have made our film more artistic and original. I decided to make an extreme close-up of the cigarette, but having only a 24 70mm lens and having used the 70mm and an f4 aperture, it was difficult to focus the cigarette entirely. At the beginning of the dinner scene, I used a gimbal that allowed me to move more freely and enabled me to focus more on the table full of food. It helped me to do a shot from the bottom to up, more continuous and natural. I would spend more time in order to choose better lenses because in many shots we would have needed a telephoto lens that we didn't have it. Having used a professional kitchen, we were able to pretend that only the protagonist, who does the chef as a profession, touched dangerous or sharp utensils such as kitchen knives. In addition to that, in this film the actors had to try many kinds of foods, so we made sure that they weren't allergic to any of the ingredients, um, checking with them before.